Oh, the madness of ND filters. If only I could rewind the clock to like a little over five years ago and sit myself down and say, you know what, Justin, no matter what you do, do not invest in any camera that does not have internal ND. And we just simply would not be here making this video right now. This is Poco, the newest Kickstarter product from a company called Mofage. Or is it Mofage? This is a PL mount lens adapter, which offers drop-in filters. You gotta love that. Such as a variable ND and a quarter white and quarter black diffusions. Now they make this usable with four different camera mounts. It can be used on Canon RF bodies, Sony's E mount, as well as the L mount Alliance, and even the good old Z mount. Ah, uh, the outlier. They're doing an early bird special right now for only 329 US dollars. Now I had never heard of this company before, nor this product until they reached out to me and asked me to give it a go. Now we did get off on a little bit of a rough start because the original RF mount they sent me did not in fact fit on my red Komodo. Dot to dot. And it just, it doesn't want to twist and I'm not hitting anything. I don't see Anywhere where it could be hitting, it just won't twist. It just doesn't twist. So they did have to send me a replacement RF mount, and lo and behold, that one works. Yay, soft clap, soft clap. However, it took a little over a week to get that replacement mount, and as you know, we all have lives and other things, other deadlines to meet, so I thought, well, eh, I better just go ahead and throw it on the Sony a7S III because they did include the E-mount in the original first package as well. Which, honestly, I was reluctant to throw this PL mount adapter onto the a7S III. Because if you saw a video I put out a couple weeks ago on the awesome Sony 28-135 to f4 servo zoom, then you already know why I even bought the a7S III in the first place, which was to take advantage of the awesome autofocus that all these newer Sonys have nowadays. Therefore, I just have no desire to ever use my Schneider Xenon cine lenses on the little tiny a7S III. However, I still really did want to test the IR pollution of this variable ND inside of this little Poco PL mount adapter. And since I wasn't even sure if the replacement RF mount they were gonna send me was even gonna work on the Komodo, I thought, yeah, I better go ahead and just do the test. So if you saw my first IR test with this adapter over on my Instagram, that actually was with the Sony a7S III. And it actually kind of worked out for the better because as it turns out, the red Komodo actually suffers from a fair amount of IR pollution all on its own, without any ND. But that just may be another video for another day. I can't believe I've owned that camera for well over two years now and just never realized that. <laughs> I guess you just go so long just blaming it on ND, even though your ND set costs $2,000. You're like, oh yeah, it's the NDs. It's not the camera. Okay, now, if you are also an A7S III owner and this Poco PL mount adapter looks cool to you and you're thinking you want to use it on your little A7S III, you should be aware that this thing is not compatible with the A7S III when it is inside of a camera cage. Because any cages made for the A7S III have to make room for the I.O. ports, which are located on the left-hand side of the camera body. Therefore, the cage makes it impossible to remove the filter from inside of the adapter. So you will have to remove your camera's cage. I just think it's something for everyone to be aware of because they are advertising this adapter to be used with mirrorless cameras. And yet most mirrorless cameras have IO ports directly on the side of the camera. So if your HDMI port, for example, is on the left-hand side of your camera body, much like the a7S III, then chances are you will also have to remove your camera cage in order to successfully use the POCO adapter. Otherwise, you will not be able to remove the filter nor access the filter wheel. Which brings me to the red Komodo. The first thing is I had to relocate my Mutiny IO record button, which isn't really that big of a deal. But also, as you can see here, the support foot on the bottom of the POCO adapter is too long and doesn't line up with the Komodo cage. 
yet again with the cage. This is a standard 8 sin cage, by the way, which is in fact compatible with the Kipper Tie adapter mount that I've had for over two years now, and it fits perfectly and definitely allows for the support foot to tie down directly connecting it to the cage. So this means that when you're using the Poco adapter on your Komodo, there is zero support for those big PL mount lenses because the Poco support foot is too long to attach to the cage and yet too short to be able to directly connect it to a quick release plate. So much like A7S III owners, Red Komodo users will also have to remove their cage. Now a bonus of this 8 sin cage that I have is that it completely comes apart. It's like a Lego cage, uh, which is actually one of the reasons I bought it. And if you subscribe to this channel, then you already know that I ditched the side plates of that 8 sin cage some time ago and swapped those out with the GDU Derringer handle and the other side has the GDU wing. However, you are still able to keep the actual base plate on the bottom. And I love that about the 8 sin cage because most every other cage on the market is proprietary and specific to that camera. But the actual rod support, um, as you know, I use that on all of my cameras. So there are parts of it, honestly the most expensive parts of the 8 sin cage, that are completely universal. And you saw that in my last video on the Sony Servo Zoom. However, I know a good amount of people that have different cages, more of those proprietary style cages like Tilta or Small Rig or whatever the case is and you're not able to really pull them apart into little separate pieces like you can with the 8 sin. So if I was one of those people that owned a normal cage, this Poco adapter would definitely be a hard pass for me right out the gate. Because a camera like the Komodo must absolutely be in some kind of cage because it's just a must. I mean, the thing is just a little cube. So without some sort of cage, you have no way to rig any of your AKS to that thing, not even a monitor, you know, but you know, since this is a Kickstarter product and we're right at the beginning of this, and I think that's the whole point, or at least I would hope that's the point of guys like me being sent these products. Um, you know, I'm, I'm guessing we could still finesse this support foot, right? Mofodge? And if you need some guidance in that area, uh, I think the Kipper Tie Adapt Amount would be a wonderful reference for you. Because if you are able to, you know, remachine this and adjust the height, maybe you could also add a 3816 bolt hole while you're down there as well. Because as you'll see here, Kipper Tie does include both bolt sizes, and that's just for extra support. And I really do think that the Poco adapter should definitely have both those bolt holes, or at least swap this quarter 20 out for a 3816, because just knowing that these are two camera bodies right now, two very popular camera bodies, and you can't use this thing with a cage on those camera bodies, and knowing that this is made for PL mount lenses, which are normally much heavier lenses, uh, yeah, I don't know about this. Because think about it, you can't attach this thing to a cage. You got a big, huge PL mount lens on here, which weighs like the size of, you know, even the small ones like my Schneider, easily weighs like two or three of normal little EF lenses, right? And you got this on here, it can't connect to the cage, and you're putting all your faith into a little quarter 20, and it's just putting all that extra stress onto your little tiny mirrorless mount. Am I the only one that seems concerned about this? I don't know, maybe so. Because also, as you'll see here, the Poco adapter doesn't exactly have a super snug fit when it's connected to the Komodo. However, when I compared it to the Kipper Tie adapter, it actually is much better. As you can see, the Kipper Tie is like hanging on for dear life. But again, that's where the support foot really comes in clutch. But also, before you start running your mouth off down in the comments about how crappy this expensive piece of equipment is, just keep in mind that I have been using both the Komodo and this Kipper Tie for over two years now, and I put a lot of hours on both the mount and the camera. So you can see now why the support foot is so important to your build. Another thing that I was a little concerned about was would you be able to black shade with the filter in or with an adapter that has a hole in the side of it regardless if there's a filter in the hole or not. Um, so I did shine a little baby Fresnel light all around where the filter slides in at and pretty much all around the adapter and there was no light leak anywhere coming in so I'm pretty sure you'd be safe doing a sensor calibration with this adapter mount. 
Now, finally, moving on to the ND filter. Wow, wow. Now, one thing that is cool though, actually, that I first, you know, a good way to test variable ND is, well, first you'll always be able to see the cross polarization because they're just built out of two circular polarizers, which is a problem with how you get X patterns. This one does, you know, it, it has hard stops, which I really do appreciate. The last hard stop at the eighth stop, because this actually goes from one stop all the way to eight stops of neutral density. And right before you get to the last stop, you can see the last little X pattern, you know, right towards the end, you just start to you just start to see some some blue cast coming in there, which is the beginning of the cross polarization, but it stops because of the hard stop. So they did their best at putting an end to that at least. With that being said, no, there is no X pattern with this specific variable ND filter. So that's a good start. And the wheel is clearly labeled, which I really do appreciate. There's never any guessing what stop of ND you're on. So that's really cool. And again, you have one stop all the way through eight stops of neutral density filtration. Now, something else I'm sure you've noticed is that the little filter wheel is geared. So, you know, maybe you're hoping to use a little geared motor with this, maybe something like the Tilta Nano. However, I do want to point out it feels a little flimsy to me. And I really just question the longevity of it being under the torque of a real motor. I realize that may be really super nitpicky of me, but I just wanted to throw that out there. She pretty wiggly. Wow, and the more I mess with it, <laughs> the more wiggly she gets. I better stop doing that actually. <laughs> Anyways, let's get on with the test because the IR pollution of this variable ND is actually pretty severe. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Komodo does have its own IR issues without any ND in the recipe, which makes it even more beneficial that I also did the test with the A7S III because it actually has really good IR filtration on that sensor. So you really get to see in the A7S III test how bad the IR pollution is on this little adapter. For those of you unaware, with most neutral density filters, you don't really start to see IR pollution until around the third stop or 0.9. However, with the POCO variable ND, you do start to see the IR leaking in really quickly. Now I made this really simple for you all. Just pay close attention to what each stop of ND does to my black outfit, or even the difference of the color of my skin or the color of the wall in the background. But also beyond the IR pollution, I wanna encourage you to pay attention to the out of focus areas and the bokeh as well. So as it is with most behind the lens filtration, the POCO does require you to use the clear filter when you're not needing the ND because it still needs to use this to achieve proper back focus. And if you notice on the clear shot here, you can actually see the round circle of that clear filter within the bokeh. And then when I swap to the variable ND, well now some of the bokeh starts to get pretty choppy looking. And that's all due to the glass behind the lens. So without further ado, let's roll this test on the A7S III. And then when we get back, we're gonna look at the red Komodo with a few other different options. Uh, pretty much we'll dive into that little sneak preview that you saw at the top of the video. So since I did end up getting the new replacement RF mount and it actually worked on the Komodo, I thought, oh, perfect, this is just in time. I literally just got it today, the day that I had the talking heads scheduled to be done. So good for them, they got it in just in time um, because I actually was really excited to not only try this on the Komodo, but also it would allow me to compare 
against a couple other options that I've been using for the past couple years now, specifically on the Komodo. The first one is the Bright Tangerine One Tray Combo that I use, and I really do think it's a super convenient option for professional variable ND. The really nice thing about the One Tray is that you decide which glass goes inside. So you build this guy with a 138 millimeter circular polarizer of your choice. And then if you use some of the newer, cool, super slim cine filters, which are two millimeter instead of the standard four millimeter, you can actually stack two more filters inside of the same tray. A thin rectangular linear polarizer, which the one I use is made by Revar Cine, which for those of you that don't know, they are a company underneath the umbrella of Tokina. And then I use this 0.3 Firecrest IRND, which is also a Cine Super Slim. And you just slide that right in front of the linear polarizer. And now I have an awesome two to nine stop variable IRND that lives inside my map box. The Firecrest in the front provides IR filtration, and you even have the cool little gear wheel that everyone is obsessed with. And it is kind of cool, I guess, if you want to control the exposure seamlessly remotely. Ooh, two adverbs back to back. <laughs> <laughs> now another option, even more affordable, I think it may be around the same price as this Poco adapter. Anyways, it's the Mica EF2RF variable ND adapter. It was kind of Mica's answer to the other one that everyone paid for up front and never received. Now, I know the Mica one is not as cool because it's not PL mount, but actually, you know, a lot of budget-friendly cine lenses nowadays are coming with both options, making it very easy to swap between PL or EF. I mean, even my high-end Schneider Xenons allow me to swap between PL and EF, and honestly, I love that. I don't know, I just like having EF, and then it's easier to swap between all of my cameras. And you know, guys, uh, that Micah review video, I put that out some time ago, and it was highly slept on, so I am gonna leave a link down in the description because, you know, I think it is a, a pretty good option, and you're about to see even more reasons why it's a pretty good option. <laughs> Anyways, without further ado, now that I've lost all of you, let's do the test of this Poco adapter and compare it to both that one tray and the MICA option, as well as my professional kit of real Firecrest IRNDs. Now I do have to do a disclaimer here for all of my haters out there. Uh, you know, there are some technical differences here, all right? So let's acknowledge that right out the gate. And mainly it's because the adapter and the MICA are RF to EF. Those tests had a different focal length from my Schneider set than the Poco one. For some reason, the Poco one was a little softer. I need to say this, it wasn't because of the adapter why that test was softer. I don't know why. If you don't believe me, just go back and watch the Sony test. That one was tack sharp. It was just a little harder uh, for whatever reason. You know, it was a lot going on. It's really just to focus on the IR pollution, okay? So pay attention to my black outfit, the skin tones, regardless if they're out of focus or not, and the color of that wall behind me, right? That's the whole point of the IR test. Honestly, outside of the actual Panavision sized Firecrest IRNDs, I'm gonna be straight up here. All three of the variable options, they are disappointing. Let's just be honest and let's be real with ourselves. All three of the variable ND options are disappointing. And I mean, it kind of even sucks for me that the one tray has just as bad of color shift as both the Mica and the Poco adapter. And I only say that because, you know, all the parts and pieces that went into making that uh, Revar Cine, you know, big, huge 
one tray variable ND adapter. It was very expensive, so that's why I say it, it's a bummer for me. That was that was probably, but honestly, the majority of the price of that kit is because of the polarizer and the tray itself. So yeah, they all clearly have uh, some sort of color shift. Granted, I do still think that the Poco's colors were contaminated the most. And I also think the Poco suffers the most from IR pollution. Just go back to the Sony test and that is really eye-opening. My jacket just was getting redder and redder throughout that entire Sony test. Funny enough, the little mica adapter holds it down pretty damn well. In fact, in the future, I may just choose the mica over the one tray. And then I'll just put a one-stop IR&D in the matte box up front. You know, that would still be way less glass sitting in front in the matte box. I mean, I guess you could easily do that with the Poco adapter as well. However, you know, sure, the, the one-stop IR&D in the matte box in front of the Poco adapter is going to solve the IR filtration, but it's not going to fix the huge color shift. Now again, I have to keep circling back around to this because I don't want everyone to start crap talking the one tray because the reality is, you know, you always need a polarizer and you sometimes need diopters. And those are the two main reasons why Bright Tangerine ever even made the one tray to begin with. The idea of building this huge variable ND was just like a bonus of that kit. In the end, nobody wants the dark colors in their image to be rusty red when they're supposed to be black. Your foliage should actually be green if it was green in real life. And honestly, with a really good variable ND, you should not see any color shift all the way up until six stops. Those should be clean. However, I can't seem to find this unicorn variable ND because it doesn't exist. So in the end, I guess it's up to you, the viewer, how much you really care about the quality of the images that you are capturing. And how much time do you actually want to sit at a desk like this and spend hours in post fixing colors? I know some of you love spinning the wheels, but not when it's to do that much correction, right? We wanna be more on the creative side. Come on, right? Look, the fact is that this Poco adapter is specifically made for PL mount lenses. Lenses that were intended for the highest quality level of movie making. And uh, yeah, I don't know, the jury is still out for me on that one. But yo, this is a Kickstarter product, so maybe they could go back to the drawing board, you know, and uh, do something different in their variable ND formula. <laughs> but I can tell you right now, if they do add IR cut to this somehow, um, the price is gonna go up way up because the reality is at the end of the day if you just take this adapter for what it is at its core which is a super solid pl mount lens adapter yeah i go dirty all over my audio i don't care i'm trying to make a point man this is a hardcore sturdy pl mount now if you look at it for what it is like that then yeah then the price is actually perfect if you compare it to its competition this thing is a very solid PL mount adapter, right? That's all I'm trying to say. If you're judging it just on the performance of how well of a PL mount is it, well, it's an A++. I have no qualms with the build quality and the reliability of this thing as just a PL mount adapter. I do think they still have some adjustments to be made in figuring out the whole RF mount situation, you know? Let's just make sure that it actually fits on all RF camera mount bodies. And then, you know, yeah, obviously it would be nice if we could do something different with the variable ND. Could it be a variable IR ND? Could they just make another one of these and sell it separately as a variable IR ND? Could they make these as separate single IR NDs that you slide in and out? Now we're getting somewhere. But then they're like, yeah, Justin, but who's gonna get the money to actually make the shit, man? And then you're like, oh yeah, by the way, I have an appointment at five. Uh, Talk to you never. <laughs> in the end, uh, all of that to say, if you take everything that I just said into account, well, not everything, but you know, the important shit, you know, the reality is this thing is perfectly priced for what it is. Especially considering that that bright tangerine one tray kit that I have with all the parts that are inside of it, again, that will probably run you around 1500 bucks. Granted, the majority of the cost, again, is the tray itself and the polarizer. Big, huge polarizers like that are not 
cheap. But they do come in clutch when you gotta shoot through a windshield. Honestly, I still was a little disappointed by the results of that one tray combo. Meh, but you know, you live and you learn. In the end, as it seems to be a going trend of this channel, you get what you pay for, right? I mean, there's a reason why all of these high-end Panavision sized, and by that, for those of you who don't know, I'm talking about four by 5.65 inch, that's the industry standard. You buy a set of those, you will have them forever. If you look at all the different brands that have their IRND, you know, Tiffin has the Nats, and Schneider has the Rhodiums, and Firecrest has the, 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 the Firecrest, because <laughs> I think it's actually Format High Tech is the actual company, and then Firecrest is like the IRND brand. There's a reason why all of them are so damn expensive, and it's because they're saving you loads of time and stress in post-production. You know, and the funny thing is I do have a full set of Firecrest IRNDs. I just built the one tray about a year ago to just make my life easier for more faster moving jobs, you know? but. After analyzing today's test again, I was thinking, you know what? We may just have to go back to the old school ND, the, this, the rectangle ND workflow, you know? It's just one of the downsides of not having a camera with built-in ND. Oh, how I envy all of you FX6 owners out there. Hmm, really kicking myself in the ass for that one. You know what they say, once you go internal ND, you don't go back? <laughs> okay, anyways, links are down below for all this nonsense we talked about today, as always. And, um, you know, if you're actually literally still watching this and you have not subscribed to the channel, just, man, come on, bro, or gal, or woman, just hit the subscribe button. You know, it's really going to help me out being able to push me a little bit further. You know, I got a lot of competition with all those big boys out there, you know, and I want to keep making these videos for you all. So just, just do it, man. Just hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. If you really feel inclined, it'd be really rad if you hit the share button, you know, but I don't know. This may not be the video to hit the share button on. You know, considering that one of my tests was completely out of focus. <laughs> I gotta give a shout out to this month's Patreon producer, Mr. David Carroll. And if you are a member of the Dog Times Patreon, be on the lookout. Be sure to check out this week's video because we've already started diving in and tackling the breakdowns in the BTS of the really wild two-day documentary style music video that I shot. And, uh, you know, I did that with the little A7S III and the awesome 28 to 135 F4 servo zoom lens, as well as the two little baby G lenses on the Ronin. And I'll have you all know, there were no variable NDs used on that job. Just all old school Firecrest IRND, baby. And we did use just the polarizer, so yeah. Anyways, thank you all for watching. I cannot believe we made it through that. I think I'm literally losing my mind. Anyways, thank you all for the support. And for now, that is a wrap. Alrighty, and... So do I like look at the wall and don't look at the camera? Don't look at the camera. Yeah, don't look at the camera. You can look at me, look over yeah, yeah, here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay, we good? Yep. And camera is speeding.